In the last episode I said I expected it to take a week before my parts arrived, but only two days later and voila, here they are. So, I already unboxed it, so what's in here? Rebuild kits for the front brakes, rebuild kits for the rear brakes, rotors for the rear brakes, ball joints, because I expect there to be a fail point on the upcoming inspection. These are the front lower control arm ball joints. And I said I didn't plan to replace the brake lines, but look over here. New brake lines. Well, there's only a couple of them. I ordered both the front and the rear brake lines. Um, and you know how these things go. There's always, when you're online shopping, a flashing remark that there are only one or two or ten or five in store. But it actually was true for these bra these brake lines, and they were pretty cheap. So that's why I ordered them, and I think I just throw them in. Anyway, welcome to episode 18 of Project LS400. I'm about ready to start rebuilding the calipers again and I want this to be a slightly different episode than the previous one. This is part two. I noticed I sounded a bit rushed in the previous episode so I'll try to make this more a step-by-step -step one and the first problem is this is the bracket for the front brakes and the guide pin in this hole was seized. Now if you have a peek inside, click on my flashlight. Oh, it somewhat shows on camera if you look in here i've been through the through here with a wire brush my cordless drill this one is clean and this was the one that was seized it doesn't show particularly well on camera but there's some scale rust in here and um, i test fitted the pin in here and it's still not smooth so uh, i have to fix this um, i mean these lexuses were built to last and now it's time to repair them and overhaul them. Let's try to make this a repair that's meant to last. So my idea is to run some uh, sandpaper or emery cloth through here and see if we can smooth this out. This is the kit I use. It contains nylon brushes, steel brushes and brass brushes all in various diameters. Um, the hole in here is 11 millimeters. So I first picked my 11 meter brush and this is a 13 one and you can see I pushed it in there. Pushed a little back but it had some good brushing action but there's still some scale inside the hole that remains. This is some 600 grit sandpaper and I just try to sand it out. tried sanding it with a 600 grit sandpaper that yielded some results but not as much as I wanted so now I have a 180 grit sandpaper, waterproof sandpaper on one of those brushes I think this is as good as it gets. You can see it starting to shine, the bore, and I don't want to open up the hole too much. Let's finish, finish this off with some 600 grit to polish it a bit, and then I think it's good enough. Well, let's have a peek inside. You can see there's still some pitting in there, but the majority of the scaled rust is gone. Now I can use a more aggressive abrasive, but as I said, I do not want to open this hole too much. The guide pin will start to wiggle and it will cause new problem in itself with actually the same result that it can get jammed. So 
Um, I call this done for now. The other one, it's looking just great with plenty of lubrication. I think uh, this will work as it should. So that's one done for now, and that's the only one, uh, the only hole that was corroded. And over here is the guide pin that came out of that rusted hole. And you can see there's some pitting on here. Not over here, it was only on this area, about a centimeter. On one single spot that caused this to rust and seize. So I'm going to take some uh, a waterproof 600 grit sandpaper and sand this down smooth. Some on the back side here. Oh well. Yeah, some slight pitting on there, but I'll leave this for what it is. I want to test fit it. And it's, oh, get the right caliper in its hole. You can see there's a lot of wiggle room, but it goes for all the holes also with the other four guide pins, so that's normal. And also, there are some rubber grommets that go around here, which act as some sort of seal, so that stabilizes the, the rattling motion a bit. So, I call this one good, and now we can start working on the, um, on the assembly of the calipers and these brackets. Now let's have a peek what's in this repair kit. Ah, let's see. There's the cap that goes on the bleed plug. And we have a boot for the piston and the retaining ring. Should be two in here. There they are. Here is the boot that goes over the guide pin. I want to talk about this part later. Set that aside. Of course, the seals for the pistons, one and two. And these are the small, let's say, grommets that go over here, this part of the, uh, the guide pin. So that's in there. There are two different versions. This one is smooth around the circumference and that goes on the guide pin that's on top. This one has far notches on the circumference that goes on the lower guide pin and here is another guide pin boot as you can see there is this metal ring basically it's a t-shaped ring and i have never seen this before i'm used to seeing these boots that you just um, clip into you get it you can clip in there but I thought it was this was part of the uh, of the bracket, but I have to tap it out. It also says in the workshop manual. Let me show you this. This picture shows how it's done. We use a hammer and a drift to knock those boots out. So now I want to try to um, to tap those out. See how that goes. Um, never done that before. Uh, so let's see what's the best method. So. You can take benefit from it if you have to do this yourself. Largest hammer and a drift clamp tight into my vise. Let's see if it can tap this out. Ah, there it is. So that's fairly easy. Only thing you need is a drift with a with a sharp edge and a decent hammer. So easy as that. Gonna tap the other one out. Then talk about lubrication and grease. Now the first step in assembly is to install the seals and the pistons. And please note, this has a marking on the back, PE45. Those are the front calipers. Uh, the rear caliper has a piston the same size, but it's marked PE43. So please take note if you have everything uh, mixed together. Um, now it's not hard to install this. This is an uh, this is one of the uh, old seals, just for demonstration purposes. And when I put this in, um, I have to lubricate it so to aid the piston in and not to damage the seal. And if you use any traditional lubricant, 
oil or grease is based on a mineral oil um, that can cause these seals to swell and that's what you absolutely don't want um, that can hinder the movement of the piston in the caliper and most most of the times it prevents the piston from retracting so you have some residual pressure left on your brake pad and cause uh, uneven wear and overheating and unnecessary wear of the brakes so you really need to use one of those special greases this is ATE Brems Cylinder Pasta. It's specially developed for um, those seals and it's suitable for dot 3, dot 4 and dot 5.1 brake fluids. This is an absolute must. Let's see how this goes. It's usually a weird fit to this. You really have to force them in. You can wipe the excess off once it in, once it's in. So that's one in, and it really helps if you lubricate this. The rubber is a bit grubby, so gri sorry, the rubber can be a bit grippy so it doesn't want to take its shape in this groove that's both of them in just feel if they're not if there's not a twist or kink in there now let's get the pistons and apply a slight coat just a fingertip on the circumference and hopefully never have to take them out and there it is there it is pick the other one look for the marking on the bottom as i said it's pe45 for the front pistons it's a thin coat grease on there <clears throat> hmm. and there it goes now this looks a bit rusty there's a small little bit of residual rust on there but I'll leave that be once I have the boots on I'm gonna paint this a little bit of put some uh, copper grease on there so to, so to prevent the um, further corrosion with a little grease on there too just so to prevent damaging this inner rim have to stretch it a bit and notice that was also the case when I Took the old ones out it's a fairly tight fit slide it back a little let's see if i can get this in its slot i have an idea hold on a minute i remembered i had a single use bamboo cutlery so i'm gonna try this to guide it in let's look at the shape And it appears it is. Now these boots are held in place with these retaining clips. Let's see if yours truly can get those in without too much worries. Well, So far so good, it was much less trouble than I expected. Now, let's get this out of the way. Try some movie magic over here. And that's the second one in. So, it's actually really nice to have this 
I learned that it's called the fist, uh, I believe, that this part is off, so I have good access to get those clips in. So that's really handy dandy. Lexus invented that. Well, I'm not sure if Lexus invented that, but for me, right here, right now, it's pretty convenient. So those are in. Um, now we can screw that back on. Now, as you know, it was a bit of a struggle to get those. Torque for torque screws out. So let me remove the tape. So there it is. Now we don't need to discuss the importance of a safety critical component as the brakes here, but um, I need really need to make sure that these um, four bolts will never fall out again. And even if I, if I tighten them enough, um, I would be somewhat nervous. So I bought some Loctite, um, and they should be sufficient enough to keep those four bolts secure in place. So that's the next one. Let me get the camera set up so you can have a good view at that. Well, here is the fist part. Let keep standing up. Let's this. Use that small rubber boot. Um, here are the four bolts that go in, and before I apply um, Loctite on the threads, I'm gonna clean them with a uh, brake clean, blow them dry. So I'm pretty sure that the uh, Loctite will stick and do its job. I'm gonna do that off camera. So I'm going to apply this liberally along the entire length of the threads. I think that should be enough. Correct me if I'm wrong, leave a comment. If you know how to use this stuff, I use it every now and then. There's a stripe on there, it's fairly thick. Oops, that's a bit too much, but I spread it out. So, let me get my torx bit. Well, here we go. There's nothing much to go wrong here. I have my torque wrench set to 140 Newton meters at this moment, so let's see if we can get it there. Let's try a lower torque setting and see if you can hear the click. I'm going to lower it to 112 Newton meters. This is not uncommon for lock nuts. Let's call that done. Now there's only two things I need to do. Let's install the banjo bolt for the brake line and the bleed plug, if you truly can find that. Yeah, here it is. This is the front one. Or not. No, this is the front one. There's a bit more damage on the on the hex part. I'm gonna clean that. Um, in all honesty, um, I spray painted this and I had a little bit of paper in there that came out. So there's a small amount of uh, paint still in there. Uh, what I should have done before I assemble this thing is um, screw this in, screw it out and blow out the hole, but I'm not too worried about any debris getting in there. I'm gonna clean this with a wire reel and then install it. And before I put it on I'll apply thin coat, the special grease on the threads because it gets in contact with the brake fluid. And I want to, I want to make sure that this doesn't get seized. So just screw it in. It's a ten mil head, M6 thread. Just finger tight and put its new cap on there, which I also give a small. Sorry, I dropped my grease. Just a small bit in there, so. 
easily pops on and off. I've seen it happen a lot when you have these caps on. Whether you get some dry rod and you pull the cap off, you destroy the cap and then you'll end up driving around with your bleed plug in open air and dirt and clogging up the bleed hole in there. So give it a twist. So there's that. This one goes in here. And I'll leave the copper washes for a later moment because they're not at hand right now. They're still at the car. But anyway, this looks neat and dandy. Oh yeah, I forgot there's also some painter's tape on here, which I have to pull off. A little start. Et voilà. That's one rebuilt, very good looking front brake caliper. Except for this, but you have to neglect that. Never see that again. Well, we won't see the entire thing again. It's only this part, but there it is. Happy with that. Now back to the subject of lubrication and especially the lubrication of those guide pins. If you ask 10 mechanics what lubricant to use, then you get 10 different answers. Um, me, myself, I have always used copper grease for that. It works really well. It stays liquid. It, it maintains its lubricant capabilities. Um, there are mechanics that swear by using uh, ceramic grease. Um, but you have to use the correct one. Certain types of ceramic grease can dry out and get sticky over time. Not saying all of them do, but um, I decided to go for lithium grease because that's what the Lexus workshop man manual specifies. So I'm going to apply this and then I'm going to tap those guide pins in, into the brackets and see how they work. Oh, and also there need to be some boots in here. going to place them too. As you can see, the first boot and guide pin are in. Moving smooth. Happy with that. And there's a small trick to this. Um, the workshop manual says you, you slide the boot over the guide pin and then tap the entire thing in. But you're having a hard time getting this metal part in and you'll also possibly damage the boot. So all work was done for nothing. Let me show you what I did. Now this is our problem case, the upper one that was seized, or was it the lower one? I don't even remember. So what I did, I took a piece of pipe that's unlucky to have this, and then put a boot in there until this rim sits flush in there, it's square. Only thing is there's a bit of rust in here, so put a piece of paper towel in there and also in the boot that I can pull out that I prevent rust from falling in. And then slide this into the pipe. I'm using a drift to get the lower part of the harmonica entirely in. There it is. Now you can see this edge sits flush with the um, with the pipe. I'll place it on there. Make sure that it's kind of square. And there it is. Pull out the piece of paper towel. Just put some extra lube on the guide pin. There it is. Nice smooth movement. Happy with that. Um, the next task is to install these abutment clips and they go in like this. There are two large lips. One faces towards the bolts and other faces to the outside. Now there used to be some small anti-squeal pads under there. But I've lost the majority of them. All, and also the majority of them are already gone. What I am going to do is apply a little coat, a small coat of copper grease on there, especially around these edges, just a little bit, and then clip them in. A little bit goes a long way.
go. That's the bracket ready to go back on. Now here are the old and new brake pad. I got a sensor off and the sensor is a sacrificial part so that leads me to believe it came with a new brake pads. Probably these are original Lexus. But anyway the sensor broke. There's a housing over here and there's a continuity wire in there and when the brake pads wear the sensor wears through, continuity is lost when this is cut and that triggers the warning light. Now I could easily um, put a jumper cable and a connector that's still on the car where this one connects to and I don't have a warning light continuously lit for my uh, brake pad wear but also when they do wear and also don't have a warning light. I have the idea of drilling a hole in here on exactly the same spot as there and put the sensor in and keep it in place with some epoxy glue. Only thing I need to find out is that if uh, epoxy glue is um, has enough temperature uh, resistance because these things get hot. So um, I'll let you know in the next segment. So it's the following day and I've been doing some research on how to install the brake wear sensor on the new pads. Um, and I found out that the epoxy glues I had didn't ha have enough temperature resistance. So I went ahead and bought this. This is Thermofix. It's resistant to 1100 degrees Celsius. I'll blink in the Fahrenheit in screen. Now what I'm going to do is just drill a hole in this pad here. Put the sensor in, put some glue on there, it has to sit for three hours and then I think um, I can make this work. This is the end result, it's glued in place and it's firmly in place, I can't pull it out and it just covered up the loop a little bit. So, new brake pad with the old sensor. Now oh, here is the rear caliper, it's just rinse and repeat, I did all of that off camera, it's boring to see the same thing twice. Um, it's fully assembled, it's on its bracket and I put this small bracket on here for the brake pad wear sensor cable there's a paint marking on here that means this one's tightened when i install the brake pads in here i only need to loosen this one and then i can tilt it upwards so there's that and here they both are two good as new brake calipers for my lexus ls 400 i'm pretty happy with the end result and another beauty shot from the back. Before you ask, do I need to apply a coat of ceramic grease or copper grease on the back of the brake pads? Uh, it depends on where you live. Where I live, they salt the roads like there's no tomorrow. So what I do is I coat these edges with copper grease. And also on this edge where there's bare cast iron you can already see there is a flash rust on there so when i put the pads in i coat this these surfaces with copper grease just a small amount well guys i just finished editing this episode and i think i'll park it here uh, usually or normally i would install the brakes on the car but i have some work to do i have to replace the ball joints i want to clean the in the wheel wells, I have some rusty pad in the rear panels, in the rear fender, which you have seen. So before I put on the brakes, I want to have all those tasks out of the way. So the installation of the brakes will be in a future episode. Anyway, I would like to thank you for watching. If you liked following me along, uh, give me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you have any questions. Also, I set up a Buy Me A Coffee account, so if you want to support me, want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee, I'll leave the link up in this description. For now, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye!